Paul, I thought that the surprise there was that employment component, you know, dropping below 50 pretty sharply. Yep. I think that's what that triggered the, the, the rally in bonds because it's a bit contradicting to what we saw yesterday with the PMI services data. Now, these sur surveys are a little different from each other, but nonetheless, in the employment component, that survey was up. And it was actually, I think, part of the reason why we saw better payroll data this morning. And so I guess this survey is indicating that, you know, some of the people in the supply uh, management uh, survey view that the economy is perhaps getting weaker or they're having less demand for labor. Either way, you're getting this whipsaw on the market this morning. Yield goes up to 4.10 on, on the 10-year on the payroll report and reversed back yep. down to 396. So I think what it tells us is that this is a good economy. Uh, there will be some rate cuts coming in the future. Uh, but it is not like a recession economy either. So you're not seeing much lower yields, I think, from here. Yeah, so Ben, let's get into the rate cuts that you talked about, because we have the jobs out, we have ISM. Um, you also get resource from Wall Street firms, from banks. So when do you see these rate cuts possibly kicking in? So I think the March rate cut is, is, is probably too soon, and that's just because the way the Fed has communicated that so far. You know, they've given us an idea that they are having projections out that probably gives them the confidence that they actually this year can lower rates compared to last year when they said resoundingly like there's no case for rate cuts but a march rate cut would mean that inflation data we're getting out until that time would see such a significant decline that they start reacting to that and then make the case that march is the live meeting so i think from the here uh, lisa it will be more about as we're getting several months of inflation employment data and it continues to go towards the you know the goal that they have two percent inflation and unemployment rate maybe a little bit above four that it probably is more close to the june to get the first rate cut and then we really are into the second half of the year so i don't think you're going to see six rate cuts this year so ben what did you make we haven't spoken to you in a while here what did you make of that big move we saw in the markets there in the last I don't know, 10 weeks of the year last year. We just had the 10 year go from 5% to three and a quarter. We had the stocks just rip. I mean, what was that? Yeah, that's actually the right right, uh, you know, way to say it. What, what was it really about? Was it just about yields going down? Because one CPI report showed that the owner's equivalent rent finally starts to decline. I don't see it in New York, but okay, it's it's finally declining, so that triggered the, 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 the move down in yields, and it was a relief, and you're getting all the high beta and small caps and everything, start to price in this idea that, yeah, okay, the economy's not going to go to recession, it will be a soft landing, maybe even no landing, I think, because it's just simply the economy staying on track. Uh, and at the same time, it's about those who, who had money on the sidelines redeploying in something that lacked relative to technology. So sort of a relative catch up that I think all, all I think what drove this rally. Now, will it con continue is to be seen because I think what we're coming into this year is that we're, we're going to keep the Fed still restricted for a bit of time. So the economy, if it does stay in a slower track than last year, you know, you may see stocks not perform so strongly as we saw last year as yields to sort of stay where we are. And I think that's, that's a really important part about that story. Ultimately, it's all about interest rates. Yeah, but the, a strong job, jobs market, it's that main kind of engine for resilient consumer spending. Um, and it's pushed a lot of economists to rethink their recession calls. What's, what's your take on that? Yeah, I think the recession call, I'm, I'm, I've never been in that camp. I still think there's no recession this year. There may not even be next year. I think he, here's where I come from on this important point to make maybe is that the fiscal impulse that we have to the economy, fiscal spending, is not going to change this year. They have agreed on the debt ceiling last year. They have 1% mandatory spending cut across the board. But that's so small if you, if you think about back in 2011-12 when they had a 10% mandatory spending cut, which really slowed down the economy. 1% is just not going to do much for the economy, especially if you're seeing jobs data like this coming out and you're seeing confidence picking up and financial conditions being looser, right? So I think it's an economy that stays on track. What could change it is next year, whomever's in the White House. But here's one other thing about that White House race, uh, the new president. Whether it's Biden or Trump, which what, what it looks like, either of them wants to stimulate the economy, either with tax cuts or with more spending. So either way, I think this recession scenario is not going to play out unless we're getting major fiscal spending contraction. As I mentioned, I don't, I don't think that's the case. So given that backdrop, uh, Ben, kind of what's your, your, your 
best idea here coming into 2024. Um, a lot of folks were saying, hey, just be long equity markets. But then you had that huge run up in the yeah. end of the year. And maybe some of the, the glory was taken out of there. What's your best idea or do you think about 24? Well, we do look carefully at, at new asset valuations. And, you know, uh, my colleague Cameron Dawson, who was on Bloomberg's events the other day, mm -hmm. she kind of made the case on that too, saying, look, we do have overvaluation in tech. And, and the adjustment of interest rates a bit higher from here because the economy is just better, takes off some of that, that, that valuation froth that's in there. Uh, but there was also some, I think, some level of froth coming into, uh, you know, really high beta elements of the market. So I think you want to play it more, a bit more defense. We like energy, we like the utility sector, we like some of the healthcare sector. You really pick your, your best parts there. There's very, some stocks are very undervalued relative to the market, meaning trading really at low multiples. And actually, the earnings forecasts are much more realistic. So not chasing, I guess, those uh, magnificent seven. Not not really. Yep. So to call, like, yeah, Jeffrey's like Microsoft. Yep. We all know that Microsoft is a great company. And it's good and strong. But you will be chasing it probably here at, this, at these valuation mm -hmm. levels. Um, what I, I like in fixed income and also I think in equity is that emerging markets is an interesting story because we are coming off really restrictive rates in emerging markets and inflation is really moderated there. Uh, there's some really good earnings growth stories, both Asia and Latin America. So I think there's an opportunity. We like Japan. There's another market that's continues to be an outperformer in international equity. Um, and then lastly, we got to watch what the dollar is going to do this year. If the Fed's going to lower rates, it's going to lead likely to a weaker dollar environment. Every time the dollar does go below 100 on the index, it leads to significant rally in energy and commodities. It's been that historically that way. I don't think it's going to be different this way. Uh, this year and now whatever happens with geopolitically energy is i think a bit undervalued from where it is currently same thing some somewhat in commodities lastly gold could actually be a strong year for gold given uncertainty and fed easy it performs quite well in in, in that environment